Hi there folks, look, uh, I just uh, took a look at my charts and uh, that full moon eclipse, um, the lunar eclipse is taking place on the 30th of November. I was actually looking at the wrong, the wrong house for most of the signs, so I just wanted to quickly go through. Cancer, the eclipse will take place in your 12th house. That's very, very important because it's your ruler and it's going to happen there in that spiritualized area of your zodiac. Welcome again, Cancer Dodici here with your November monthly forecast. It's just a brief forecast. I just want to give you a little tidbit of information here and there to help you understand, especially this month, with the theme being several retrograde planets again, more personal planets, Mercury and uh, Mars from what I can see here. But for you, you've just drawn the uh, lucky dip. Because for you, the retrogression of Mars is actually a good thing. Mars in your horoscope rules your 10th house and your 5th house. So the dictum is that when a planet rules the angular position, that's your 10th house, and also the 5th house, which is a triangular position, then that planet is elevated in status and produces really, really good results. And so contrary to the popular Western belief that a retrograde planet is going to cause all sorts of problems, um, I would say that for you, there are a few of the star signs that are an exception to that this month, should empower you considerably in terms of your work. Now, don't worry that there may be, in some cases, little, little sort of trip-ups or little miscommunications, that sort of thing. That's Mercury. Mercury is not your friendliest planet, it rules your third house and it rules your 12th house. These are not good houses. So I'm just putting that aside, talking about Mars for you, which is in fact a very, very good planet. And the advice here is that you should just go for it, especially with this planet ruling your 10th house and being in the 10th house. The 10th house is the uppermost part of the heavens, <clears throat> that part of the zodiac where at midday you see the sun. This part is the culmination of your identity. It's, the, it's, it's who you are, not just in terms of the work that you do, but it has to do with your self-esteem, the reputation that you develop. And so when that planet is retrograde, it is accelerating that energy. The ancient sage uh, astrologers of India said that the retrograde planet, good planet for a particular sun sign or ascendant such as yours, the retrograde planet acts like an exalted planet. Exalted planets yield very, very good results. So this is the time for you, to, if you've been <clears throat> hankering after a new job, you've been a little bit undecided, this is the time for you to really make a move, step up. The one thing I would say to you is that you probably feel a little guilty you know, if there have been other people you've worked with and you're moving up the ranks and then you've got an opportunity to compete and outdo them, there might just be that little twinge of guilt. Cast that to the side, I say. And do what thou wilt. You must do what you have to to achieve your ends. Now, having said that, we do get, you know, this, the, I gave you the good news first. The bad news is this third and twelfth ruler, which is Mercury. The twelfth ruler is all your secret enemies. Third ruler is your communication. So when there's a link here and that planet is retrograde, of course, that is going to gain strength. And that is not so good because there could be rumors, there could be innuendo, there can be things said about you. You know, they say all's fair in love and war or going for a, a new position somewhere. So be very, very careful of what you say. Uh, you may say nothing wrong, but of course, we're misinterpreted. If possible, you should put everything in writing. If there's something important that you have to note or some point you have to make, it's a good idea to do it through the written word via email. At least all of that is then documented. Now on the 15th, there's a new moon. I've got to talk about the new moon. New moons are very, very important along with the eclipses. And I did forget in the last reading I just did for Gemini to mention the uh, lunar eclipse on the 30th. So there's the 15th and then exactly 15 days later, two very important lunar events for you, Cancer, which have to, well, very important because your ruler is the moon, of course. So the new moon in the fifth house, the sun is there, moon is going to swing around, your ruler is going to swing around there, and then this is going to unleash a whole lot of new energy, which I think for you, 
is going to really clear a lot of blocks. Uh, it's going to give you the opportunity to you know, imprint your unique individuality on any project you do, any relationship that you have, any friendship that you value. And the fifth house, speaking of relationships and love affairs, this is a very important triangular part of your horoscope. The triangle, the fifth triangle, the fifth house has to do with uh, love affairs, um, romantic affairs of the heart. So this is definitely a signal that something new after the middle of the month is going to start. We also notice that Mars, which has been retrograde in that position of power, backs off, comes to its stationary point in readiness for going back into its normal forward motion. So I think the middle of the month for you is going to be very, very significant, very, very important. The most important point that I make is that you should be extremely careful with the way that you word any of your contracts, how you speak in your meetings. That's likely to two, four, six, eight, the eighth, eighth, ninth, and tenth, when the moon in its dark phase moves into this third house of your horoscope, you must be extremely careful around that time. And uh, you're best to say less and listen. That will serve you well. So there's more that I've uh, compiled for you this month, Cancer, there at astrology.com.au, my website. If you'd like to pop in there, you can find out more on a daily basis, weekly basis. We have a more chronological analysis of the transits for you on a monthly basis and the yearly. So we've got it all tied in there. If you need something more personal, you know, you can always drop me a line here. Please don't forget to subscribe. We love your subscriptions if you haven't yet already done that. And we'd love to have you back next month where we'll be talking about the last month of 2020. Do join me. Take care. See you then. Bye-bye.